Hey guys, it's your girl Snow White. I am so happy you're watching this video. Why? Because I get so many messages daily from people asking me what should they do with their account, what shouldn't they do with their account. Well, I figured let's just make a video and that way I can describe to you all in my opinion all the things you should try to avoid doing in Rise of the Kingdom with your account. Because I know I'm guilty of making a lot of these mistakes myself, as well as all of the other players too. So don't feel bad. It happens to everybody. I wish I had someone to easily describe everything to me when I started this game. So hopefully this guide will help you guys not make the same mistakes that we have and save you a lot of time and effort. Before we get into it, please make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and turn on those notifications. Let's start with my favorite thing in this game gems. Girls gotta love her diamonds. What not to do with your gems? Well, do not invest in castle books. Why? Because you are going to get enough castle books to max out your castle and at the end you're gonna end up selling all these castle books for 40 alliance credits. Trust me, it's a waste. Please don't do it. What else not to do with gems? Well, do not, under any circumstance, use gems to upgrade your buildings or do finish research with them. And especially, don't buy anything in the shop with these gems until you have at least reached your VIP to level 10, preferably. <laughs> that way you get one golden head. And if you have a lot of gems, sure, you can splurge. But if you're limited on them and you're a free-to-play player, trust me, just invest in VIP status. You want to increase your VIP as soon as you can, as high as you can. The buffs, the extra gold heads, they go a lot further than investing in castles, books, or into upgrades or anything else like that. So be wise with your gems, guys. Now my second most favorite thing in the game, golden headies. Oh, gotta love those golden headies. They'll do anything for them. Now, what not to do with these golden heads? Number one, guys, please don't drop golden heads in any commander that you can get from the shop with golden keys. Just don't do it. It's a waste. You're going to end up with so many leftovers, sculptures for that commander after that you're just going to regret investing in those commanders. So what else not to do with golden heads? Real simple guys, let's say you have two legendary commanders like Alex and YSG. What you want to do is you want to max out one commander first before you move on to the other. If you start spreading your golden heads between all these commanders, they really become useless and not really effective for you. YSG, you preferably need to have a max in order for his great skill to kick in. So you gotta finish him off before you start thinking of investing in another commander like Alex. And one more very important thing about your commanders, do not have him unlocked before you start putting golden heads in him and then trying to max his skills. Make sure you lock his first skill, then his second, it depends on who it is, but mostly the first and second skills always need to be at a 5-5 five five before you focus on the third and the fourth. I know I've done this before when I started and there was no lock option. I had my YSG at 2-2-1-2. Oh god, it took me a long time, and then luckily Lilith came with the lock option, which saved my life. Let's also focus on farming commanders. Don't neglect them, guys. You want these farming commanders to get to level 37 as fast as you can, because the maxed out that they are in their farming tree, they'll be able to bring you a lot of resources a lot quicker, allowing you to do a lot of your upgrades a lot faster. Moving on to building upgrades. Now I know you all want to increase your power and max out everything as soon as you can, but under no circumstances do you open any resource chest in your items in order to do a building upgrade. Guys, you're gonna need these resource chests for a lot more important things than doing building upgrades. Be patient, just farm as much as you can, and when you have enough, do your building upgrade. And remember guys, when you're doing a building upgrade, First, ensure that everyone's helped you already from the Alliance so you got the maximum amount of help that you can and then under no circumstance do you ever use general speed ups to finish an upgrade for a building. 
trust me, you're going to keep these general speed ups for a lot more important things. So, if you need to finish that event, just use the building speed ups and nothing else and make sure again, you've timed it well. Other things you shouldn't do when you're doing a building upgrade is just hitting a random building and then upgrading them without any reason or without planning. You want to make sure that you've gone into an alliance that has a good technology preferably, you've gotten kingdom buff, you have also have a ruin that helps with that, and that way it'll decrease the amount of time it'll take for that upgrade to finish. Another note on speed ups, especially when it comes to arc, guys don't ever use the healing speed ups in arc or general ones of course, just let it go, it's only arc, you don't really need to heal anything, it is what it is. In order to save a lot of time both in building and in research, what you really do want to focus in the technology is to research as much and as fast as you can the mathematics and the engineering. That will reduce the time of both research and building so you don't have to use as many speed ups. If you're a new player just starting out, big tip, do not attack cities. You're going to kill a lot of your troops and that's going to affect your troop count and you're upgrading them. Trust me, I know I did. I once attacked a whale full on and then wondered why my hospital was empty and then didn't even have enough to farm. Yeah, big mistake. So guys, field fight, avoid city attacks. Let's talk about the expedition. Now, guys, don't neglect doing the expedition. You want to try to get to a high level as possible and as soon as possible because it offers you a great amount of rewards every day that you log in. You get a lot of experience, plus you get a lot of Ethelfled heads, and it has a little shop that you can even get lucky and get more yummy yummy goody golden headies. Let's talk about action points. Now guys, I'm telling you, there's never enough action points. So be wise with them. Do not waste them on days that there's absolutely no events. Be wise and calculate them. Use your daily action points, but don't use any extra bottles. Other mistakes a lot of people have made when it comes to material is definitely do not begin trying to forge legendary equipment. Unless you already have epic gear for all of the commanders that you want to use on field, your primary commanders that is, have them expertise. Don't waste all that material on trying to get a legendary piece of equipment because guys, it, uh, the difference between an epic uh, expertise equipment to a legendary unexpertise is only 2% in buff difference. And keep in mind getting that legendary equipment uses so much material and refining it, sometimes you could end up refining four times before you expertise it. So it takes a lot of material and time obviously to collect all of that material unless you got the moolah so be wise about that lastly let's talk about equipment and your alliance shop and your items you can sell a lot of things in the alliance shop for alliance credits but guys do not under any circumstance sell blueprints that are legendary or epic Trust me, you're going to want to keep these and it's not worth selling them for coins. And when you do get enough coins, what do you buy? Well guys, in my opinion, don't waste your alliance credits on unnecessary things. Get the only thing that you can't get anywhere in the game and that's passports. Trust me, be prepared because you never know when you need to fly away. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it helps you. There's a lot more that I can tell you, but honestly, these are the more critical ones that I think you can just focus on. If you've already made some of these mistakes, it's okay, it is what it is, we've all done it, but just try to stop now and correct your mistakes moving forward. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Thanks for tuning in and see you in my next video.